Your Buffalo Bills dominate the Dallas Cowboys 31 to 10 this week on the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. You are now listening to the Wandering Buffalo Podcast with your hosts, Justin Goddard and Andrew Chang. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fanbase Podcast Network. This show is brought to you by 26 Shirts. Uh, just awesome shirts, um, t-shirt designs, doing great work in the community. Uh, make sure you're checking out some of their designs. Um, founder of the company, Del Reed, just won fan of the year for the Buffalo Bills. So great things going on over there. Uh, make sure you check it out. Bills, we got a game to talk about today. Uh, Bills taking down the Dallas Cowboys 31-10 to 10 and was just an all-out, all-around dominating performance. Uh, super fun to watch um, in a very different way than <laughs> we've been used to. Um, I did feel really surprisingly good going into this game. It, it just it just felt right to me. Kind of uh, just the way the teams match up. Um, the, the urgency that the Bills had. I, I think this time of year it, it does matter a lot about um, what teams are playing for and teams that are good or were supposed to have been good this year playing with their backs against the wall um, versus teams that are kind of already locked up a playoff spot and they're, you know, playing out seeding and all that. I think the urgency just hits different. And in this game, um, just before the game started, the Dallas, <clears throat> excuse me, the Dallas Cowboys uh, officially locked up, locked up a playoff spot. And as soon as I saw that, I, I felt even better about this game. Um, did not expect it to look like that. And um, like I said, just all around dominant performance. And this is this is the kind of game that you picture when when you hear McDermott talk about um, the complimentary football, you know, when it's in the context of the team doing well and it's not a bad word. Um, just all around offense defense special teams we'll get to that there's a couple uh little worrisome plays in there but all around not too much i can complain about in this game i mean we we were having our uh group chat about who's going to be our ken dorsey tablet player and it's like you know we do it every week so it's a cop out to not do it but what do you got this week i mean gabe davis only having one target it's, I believe his fourth game this year that he's had no receptions um I mean the one target that he did have was a throw that you know he he beat his defender um Josh gets whacked while he's throwing it so it comes up a little short um but it also looked like you know he was having a hard time tracking the ball looked like he could have made a play to come back for it maybe gets through the defender gets a flag whatever um and then what D dalton kincaid uh two targets two drops and you know I, on the broadcast greg olson gives us the little breakdown of you know, basically he was wearing rain gloves and it wasn't raining that hard um switched the gloves but who knows how much they helped uh he didn't see another target for the rest of the game and uh Got to jump right into our guy Jimbo here. Um, as Deion Dawkins said, he's he's got a promotion. He's no longer uh, just cook. <laughs> it's uh, Chef James there, and just an unbelievable day. And I mean, definitely the most productive running back we've seen um, since Shady was on the team. And that was even a very it was a very different thing with Shady because like Shady had to be good because we didn't have other offense going on. Um, he was in a time where we were struggling with quarterback play and you know, he, he was really the motor that made this offense go. Uh, that's still Josh Allen on this team, but James Cook absolutely took over yesterday and going 
into this game if I told you, you know, we're playing the Cowboys. They're the number one offense. You know, they're averaging 40 points over the last, whatever, four or five games. The lowest score being 33. If I told you that Josh Allen's stat line was going to be 7 for 15 for 94 yards and a touchdown, I don't think most people are having the mindset that that's a game that we won. Um, but this was a this was a beautiful game to see because there's been so much this season about, you know, Josh Allen having to be unleashed, Josh Allen having to take over games, Josh Allen having to do it all. Uh, and this was a game where he didn't really have to do much of anything. Um, it's always fun to see him throw for, you know, 300 yards, 350 and four touchdowns. That's great. Um, great seeing him, you know, add a rushing touchdown, all that. Seeing a game where you're a team that had to have it and you could do it all through your running backs is absolutely insane. And it's it's not even just James Cook here. Obviously, he's going to be who we talk about today. Uh, 25 carries, 179 yards, adds another two catches for 42 yards, two total touchdowns, averaging seven yards per carry. I mean, he was absolute, absolutely lightning in a bottle, phenomenal. Um, but the other running backs involved too, uh, Latavius Murray, Ty Johnson, uh, Ty Johnson himself averaging six yards a carry. And then in the passing game, you're only players with receptions. Now, granted, like I said, it's only 15 pass attempts by Josh Allen. Um, but it's it's Diggs, it's Cook, and it's Ty Johnson. Nobody else registers a reception today. Uh, so just great game plan from Joe Brady. Great execution by the offense. And I got to give some props to the offensive line here, too, because this is... This is a spot where I had some questions going into the year, uh, right? So we had Connor McGovern in free agency. Um, I felt good about that, but we've also had some duds that we've brought in, um, particularly that left guard spot with Roger Saffold. And it's just been kind of a turnstile, uh, unintended, uh, of players coming in. <clears throat> And, you know, we get excited for somebody and then they, they don't look good. Um, you're starting a rookie in Osiris Torrance at the right guard spot. He's been great this year. He had a couple times yesterday where he was kind of got beat by Mike Parsons, but it's almost like it was, it almost looked like it was built into the play because Josh was already moving out of the pocket. Um, and then Spencer Brown, who was a huge question mark for a ton of people this year. Um, myself included, I, I was I was hoping that the Bills would do more in the way of bringing in competition. Um, I still wanted him to get the year um, just because of that ceiling that he has. But I think he's far and away exceeded my expectations. And yes, the, the conversation all this week will be about James Cook. Um, the, the skill positions are the ones that get talked about. It's the yards, the stats here are unbelievable. It's, it's the sexy position, but none of that happens, um, without the offensive line playing the way they did today. Um, so kudos to them. That was probably the best all around performance that I've seen from this group this year. And that really allowed James Cook to play like this patient style of football. Like we, we all know how explosive he can be in, in the open field. <clears throat> we all know, you know, how shifty he can be, how he can make guys miss. Um, but what this offensive line was able to give him was that ability to, to be patient and pick his spot and then go. And once he's through that first level, um, linebackers, cornerbacks, safeties, I mean, he's he's making one of them miss per play for the most part, right? So props to Joe Brady and Aaron Cromer for coming up with this with this game plan. And then props to the offensive line for giving Cook opportunities. Props to James Cook above all for capitalizing on it. 
And what I really loved about his performance today is this wasn't just, you know, he gets a seam and he's running for, you know, 15 yards before somebody touches him and he goes down at the first contact. Now this was, he was making guys miss. He was breaking tackles. Um, we had, you know, pileups happen. The, the one play that I keep thinking about is, you know, he makes first contact at like five yards and gets kind of stood up and everybody gets on board. You know, it's two players, three players, four players, and it just ends up being everybody pushing him forward. And a run that was maybe four or five yards ends up being like 12 yards and a first down. Uh, so the going alongside with James Cook and his unbelievable performance was a dominating physicality that we haven't seen from this team a ton. And I love seeing that as we're getting close to the playoffs, provided we can get there. Um, we'll talk about that in the second half of the show. Um, but there's been so much since we've drafted Josh Allen of this team being Josh Allen, Josh Allen runs, throws, everything was finesse. Um, it, it was kind of like, you know, just having a, like a fast Ferrari, um, in this game, it looked like the bills were driving a Humvee, just <laughs> running people over and. I love seeing that because that's that's part of part of what I think has made the Bills come up short in previous postseason runs is other teams being able to out physical them on both of the lines of scrimmage and the defense was great defensive line was great this this game too we'll talk about that in a little bit um but seeing the physicality from the offense and it's not just not just James Cook, it was Ty Johnson. He was running super hard and he's very different different looking running back. Um he's kind of, he kind of was just getting more straight ahead and dude looks like on like a toss play, looks like he's returning a punt. He just gets a full head of steam and goes straight. And I'm I'm looking at him like he looks like an absolute maniac the way he's running into contact. Um, but I've been super impressed by Ty Johnson. I I liked when the Bills added him this offseason. I, I liked what we've seen from him on the Jets in the past. Um, I thought he was kind of an underrating signing this year. And we haven't really seen him till recent weeks. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there calling for Leonard Fournette to get his opportunity on this team. Ty Johnson keeps playing like that, and Latavius Murray's been kind of exactly what I thought he would be going into the season, you know, getting the tough guards, playing well in pass protection. I don't know if we see Fournette ever come up this year, um, unless there's injuries. Um, so just all around, running back's great. And then Josh Allen, obviously involved with, in the rushing game as well, um, runs in for... You know, that short touchdown, again, pile up, bodies pushing. And the one thing that I really liked from Allen this game that I don't think is going to be talked about very much is there's so much conversation about the brotherly shove, the tush push, whatever you want to call it. Everybody's trying to create their own play of this. Um, I like the way Josh Allen does it. Um, it. It's not just like this mosh pit of, you know, your quarterback's got to take the ball and then everybody's just kind of shoving them into other people. I, I I know it's worked out really well for Philly. It's other teams have tried it and gotten players hurt, whatever. Um, I much prefer Josh Allen's version where he kind of just takes the snap and sees where a little seam is going to be and, and then just kind of gets pushed the rest of the way through it. Um, you're usually only going for like a yard or two. And half the time he's ended up with four or five yards. Um, so I like I like that version of this play. Um, it, it's something that I've been thinking about all year of so much noise being made about the brotherly shove. And like, I feel like for the most part, if you had, you know, the right pieces in place, the 
pretty standard quarterback sneak was already very successful. Um, we've seen it in the past with Josh Allen, and one of one of the best players at quarterback sneaks was Tom Brady. Uh, it's not like this big physically imposing guy, not this super athlete. It's just a, a quick execution of you need need a yard. Uh, I think the way it's been done for a long time has been pretty fine. Billy's got a different way of doing it. That's fine. I don't love that way of doing it, and I like I like the way Josh Allen did it. A um, couple more things on James Cook here. Um, just with the season that he's putting together, um, a stat I came across is he's currently third in the NFL right now um, for yards from scrimmage. And I thought this was a really interesting stat because, like, I feel like he's really blown up, like, the last four or five games or so, just, like, basically averaging over 100 scrimmage yards. Um, and I knew he was having a good season, but in the context of the NFL, there's only two players with more yards from scrimmage than him this year, and that's Tyreek Hill and Christian McCaffrey. And for my money, if... For my money, these guys are being talked about of, like, should they be in consideration for the MVP? Um, I don't think they'll ever win it because I think the MVP is kind of a stupid award that's just uh, the quarterback of the sexiest team is how it, how it goes. Um, for my money, it, it, it would be probably Tyree Killer or Christian McCaffrey this year just for everything that they do for their teams. You see what the teams look like when they're not there. Whatever. That aside, these dudes as skill position players are in the conversation for MVP and our guy James Cook is is right on their heels, right behind them. Uh, so really awesome to see. You think about, you know, the MVP conversation. And if, if somebody on the Bills is going to be in the MVP conversation, you immediately think Josh Allen. Um, you immediately think Stefan Diggs. James Cook is putting together a season that's right up there uh, with the most effective players in the league. And I don't think you're going to see this level of touches from him every week. I mean, he, he had 27 touches. Um, but what he's shown over the last couple of weeks, this dude needs to be a focal point going forward. Talking at least like 17 20 touches a week just with what he's been able to do with it do want to move on to the defensive side of the ball here because as much fun as you know james cook was as much fun as this offense you know dominating having our our backups coming in you know with most of the fourth quarter left uh the defense also put on a performance today and Sean McDermott's had himself in the spotlight over the last couple of weeks and just really, I don't know if he felt the pressure, if it was all kind of coming to a head and it was about to happen anyways. Um, the last the last two games were great game plans, great execution by him, um, in particular this game. And they kept talking on the broadcast today about, you know, oh, this defense is doing it today without without Micah Hyde. Um, and that's kind of like ignoring what everything this defense has been through this year, right? Um, Micah Hyde and Epinesa missing this game. Um, Epinesa has been having really coming into his own this season. So it was a big loss, um, but also not having Micah Hyde back there. To me, that's ignoring like everything else that this defense has overcome. And yes, you've made adjustments during the season to kind of replace that. Uh, but you had the number one offense in the league coming into town. And yes, you're missing Hyde, you're missing Epinesa, but we're also missing Trey White, Daquan Jones, Matt Milano, like all of these. Milano and Trey White in particular, because they've been here long, these cornerstone pieces of the defense. Uh, but the insane level that Daquan Jones started this season at. Um, just to be able to 
overcome that and and really shut down this high powered offense. I mean, you have Dak Prescott as one of the one of the biggest names in the MVP race right now. Um, goes twenty one of thirty four for one hundred and thirty four yards, gets sacked three times, and throws an interception. And I'll tell you what, it shows up as one interception, but there is like two, three, four more that could have happened. Uh, I know, you know, you can't really play the hindsight maybe game, but I mean, Jordan Phillips had one that was right into his hands. He he was did a great job on that play of knew he wasn't getting home and kind of just stopped his rush, looked at Dak's eyes and got up for it. <clears throat> not a catch that I really expect Jordan Phillips to make. Um, so kind of nothing lost there, but we also had Poyer close on a ball ball real quick and kind of just through the contact lost it. Um, you had Benford with one thrown right into his chest that he, he wasn't able to come down with. Uh, there was another one with Benford where he was trying to do some toe drag swag on the sideline. Um, this defense had had answers for that offense and really limited some really explosive players. Like CD Lamb ends this game with seven catches for 53 yards. Um, it seems like McDermott always has some good game plans to really shut down um, the opposition's, you know, what they want to do most. It's kind of like that the Bill Belichick philosophy of, you know, making the other team beat you left-handed. And we've seen this with like the marquee name running backs usually have them having pretty small games against the Bills. Um, see it with like, you know, Tyreek even going back to when he was with the Chiefs. Uh, it's usually kind of like really limit that player and figure out the rest. And <clears throat> that's what we were able to do with CD Lamb today. Um, like I said, overall, just a dominant performance and it ends up being 10 points on the scoreboard. Um, whatever it is, what it is for the score is the score, right? But that the seven points is kind of moving into, you know, more of a, let them have whatever they want underneath and across the middle, keep the clock running and let, let's get out of here. Defense came in and held the team that's been averaging 40 points a game to 10. So just all around great performance. Uh, another sack out there for Leonard Floyd. I mean, this has got to be one of the sneakiest good signings that uh, Bean has made in free agency. Uh, he's now over double digit sacks for the year. Uh, first player to do that for the Bills since... I don't know when I, I heard when it was, but I, I I've already lost it. Um, I know it's something that we haven't seen recently. Um, so just crazy season for him. Hopefully maybe we can get him to stick around in the off season. That's a conversation for another day. Um, Ed Oliver out there having just another phenomenal game and kind of like the most impactful one score game or I'm sorry, one tackle game, you know, nothing really shows up for him on the stat sheet. He, he had one tackle, um, but he was in the backfield like constantly um, causing Dak to move around. Uh, I'd say two of those three sacks. You could, you could pretty much lump out Oliver in there. Like he was making the play um, cause he was affecting it. Um, Greg Rousseau back there. Jordan Phillips with a sack today. I mean, that was just <clears throat> a, a defensive line performance that we've seen this group be capable of. They've kind of been a little inconsistent at times. They put it all together today for four quarters, and it was just a phenomenal performance. <clears throat> and the last person I want to talk about today on the defensive side of the ball, <clears throat> Terrell Dodson. Uh, I know we we had a lot of people, myself included, very concerned about what the plan was at linebacker. Um, 
going into the season. Terrell Bernard ends up being a really, you know, bright spot early on. Then Matt, Matt Milano goes down and we're right back to like, well, what's the plan? Terrell Dodson, while having his limitations, has come in and been a very effective linebacker for this team. Um, yes, I think there's, you know, some, some scheming um, that helps cover up, you know, some of the things that he's not great at. Uh, I think often in like passing downs, you see Hoyer playing a little bit lower in the box to kind of keep an eye on him in the passing game. That's fine. Um, we talked about, I talked about this in the off season of, you know, kind of it, if it was, it was more from the perspective of Bernard of, you know, if that's going to be your weakest spot as one of the linebackers you have ways that you can kind of mess that you can cover it up. Now I expected it to be Bernard that had to be covered up. He's, he's been phenomenal. Um, but being able to transpose that onto Dodson plus the play that he was having by himself. Um, it, it's been great. And I, I got apologies for Terrell Dodson. <clears throat> Still rather it be Milano. Um, but he's exceeded my expectations. Um, and then quick touch on special teams. Um, one of my only kind of could be negatives from this game was kind of in the punting game. Um, we saw one punt get very nearly blocked and then a second punt that 100% should have been blocked. Defender leaves their feet instead and ends up being a uh, roughing the kicker that gives the bills the first down. Um, Great that it shook out that way for the Bills. Um, if that defender stays on his feet, and we didn't see it happen, but for for me, that that was going to be a blocked punt. So instead of you know getting a first down that ends up turning into a touchdown drive, could have easily been six points going the other way. Um, so definitely something to take a look at there. Of you know <clears throat> how was Day Dallas able to? be getting after the punter like that um outside of that tyler bass four for four on pats made his only field goal attempt and then i thought hardy had a really good day return wise um you know returned two punts for 32 yards uh only seven yards on his one kick return um but smart plays with the ball um making the right decisions fielding punts and then having a little bit of, having a little bit of juice in um getting some yards back on on some punt returns so overall pleased with the special teams matt smiley take a look at that at that punt units see what's going on there so that that one doesn't cost us a game down the stretch here uh, we're going to take a quick break uh, on the other side i just want to talk about some of the other games in the nfl uh, this weekend and what the future looks like for the Bills down the stretch here. Stick around. Hey, this is Dick DeGroat, Bills Dad. Now back to the show. Bills Mafia, welcome back in and thank you for joining me on this week's episode of the Wandering Buffalo Podcast. Want to jump back in here and talk about kind of where the rest of the AFC is shaking out right now. And <clears throat> with this win, the Bills went up from um, the 11th spot to the 9th spot, could go up to the 8th spot. Um, at the time of this recording, we'll see, we'll see what happens still. Um, didn't get much help from the rest of the league today, um, which it really sucks having the team that we have and, and feeling like we're in the 2000s drought bills just you know, scoreboard watching, seeing if anybody did us any favors. Um, but they didn't. Um, Ravens beat the Jaguars. That pushes them down into, you know, the muddy, <clears throat> this muddied up wild card pitcher. Um, you know, kind of plants them back in there with us with another team that we don't have the head to head victory on. Um, Titans take the Texans to overtime. 
and end up losing there. Um, the Bears. Last play of the game, Bears have uh, a chance at a Hail Mary. Uh, it bounces down. I forget who the player was, but it, it kind of lands in his chest and he's not able to secure it. That would have been, you know, a beautiful walk off Hail Mary that could have helped us out. Um, I, I was very confident in the Jets um, against the Dolphins. I thought their, their defense would find a way to shut down the Dolphins, especially with Tyreek out, especially with their center out for the season. Quinn and Williams there in the middle. Um, Jets, Jets did absolutely nothing for me in that game. Um, <clears throat> that's why we can't be counting on anybody else to do us any favors. Um, and then uh, Steelers and Colts. I mean, that was that was a win for us because they're they're both they're both right there. So like, one of them had to win, one of them had to lose. Uh, that's fine with me. Lions did uh, take care of the Broncos. Um, and then <clears throat> the Vikings had a chance to take down the Bengals in overtime. Um, they came up short as well. Um, so didn't really get much help there. Now down the stretch here, we do have a lot of those teams. We're all kind of in the same spot, same records, duking it out for those spots. Um, some of those teams are playing each other. One will have to lose, obviously, uh, but kind of depending on how the rest of the season goes, that that path is looking pretty rough. And <clears throat> I was having a debate with one of my buddies on, and this was before the Chiefs game, of uh, what the clear path was for the Bills to make the playoffs. And he was very much on the clearest path is winning the division. Um... I, I had it kind of at a at a coin flip. <clears throat> After this weekend and how all the games shook out, um, despite Miami winning, I, I think the clearest path and you know the the least stressful way for the Bills to do it is is to win the division. Um you got a couple games coming up that the Bills should be able to take care of their business um against the Chargers and then the Patriots. Um, and then the, the jet, or I'm sorry, the, the dolphins, um, I was expecting them to have to drop basically the Dallas and the Baltimore game. Um, they had that surprising loss to the Titans and it's definitely not one I was counting on. Definitely one that helps us out <clears throat> significantly. So if the bills are able to win out here. I mean, you're talking about you need the Dolphins to to lose one of the next two games here um, between the Cowboys and the Ravens. And I'll tell you what, I feel like the Cowboys are going to be coming into that game pretty revved up. And then the Ravens are looking like maybe the best team in the AFC right now um, before wrapping up with the Bills Week 18. Um, so week 18 could be all the marbles for the division. I, I do think if the bills are able to get themselves in the position to be playing for the division week 18 probably means they've also locked up a wild card spot, but I don't want to play that game. Um, we saw how dominant the Patriots were in this division for so long and <clears throat> We've kind of we've kind of started on that path, um, and it looked like it was a complete lost cause like three weeks ago. Um, now looking at it, it doesn't seem all that unreasonable. <clears throat> I mean, I know we have a loss to the Patriots this year, um, super embarrassing, and the Bills right now are a completely different team than when we played them last. Um, there's some talk about the, um, you know, we just fired our coach bump for the Chargers. It's a thing. Um, it, it, it is a thing. We see it time and time again. Um, just a really struggling team fires their coach and bounces back and, and has like 
one game that's just completely out of character and then they kind of go back to who they were um i'm not as concerned about that with the chargers right now um i i think they i think they looked pretty pretty tapped out in that massacre against the raiders and yeah you can you can get that you know interim head coach bump for a game but you're talking about a defense with talent all over the field that gave up 63 um to the raiders you know who who aren't very good you know they scored what uh or held shut out the previous week against the vikings um and then on offense, you know, their star receiver in Keenan Allen was hurt. I don't know if he'll be back this week. I don't know if they kind of shut him down because they're they're not playing for anything at this point. <clears throat> but their, you know, their franchise quarterback, Justin Herbert, isn't going to be playing. Um, so I think there is a lot. There are a lot of examples of getting that, that one game bump for an interim head coach. Um think a lot of times the context is very different of you know a team was underperforming but all their pieces are there and you fired a coach and boom they unlock something with the starting quarterback that was already there and you know they're able to to rise up for a game um i think it's a whole different situation when you know the the team is i don't think they're technically eliminated yet but Chargers aren't going to the playoffs uh, and, and you're playing your backup quarterback. You just got absolutely annihilated. Uh, so, I mean, realistically, the Bills should rattle off the next two and be sitting at 10 and six headed into that Miami game. And as it stands right now, um, like I said, Miami's got Dallas and Baltimore coming up. I I wouldn't be surprised to see them lose both of those games. Um, so certainly not the upcoming end of the season that I was expecting going into this year. Um, had the Bills at something like, you know, 13 wins. Uh, 12, 13 wins, you know. Maybe edging Miami out for the division by like one game. Uh, I, I did think Miami was going to be some competition this year um then we got about halfway through the season and you know i still think we'll make the playoffs but it's you know gonna be as a wild card spot we're not gonna catch miami blah 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 um down to you know three games left and that division's still on the table the bills just gotta <clears throat> go out there and handle their business um Hope Miami coughs up a game or two. Um, even if they just lose one, you know, going into the final week, we we have the head-to-head -head, um, tiebreaker with the Dolphins. Um, so that division is still very much in play. It is going to be an exciting end to the season here. And I'll tell you what, if the Bills get in, um, regardless of what seed they make it as, this is not a team that people are going to want to catch in the playoffs right now. Um a team that has had their struggles overcome their adversity throughout the season. Um, they're playing good football right now, coming in hot. Um, uh, Joe Brady's looks like he's calling great offenses. Uh, look out league if the bills get in. So we'll see what happens on the stretch. We'll be here every week. Um, breaking it down for you along the way. Make sure you don't miss anything like share, subscribe, Tell a friend about it. Enjoy the rest of the season with us. Uh, we'll be back next week um, breaking down the Chargers game. Uh, so make sure you tune in. And as always, go Bills.